Hi folks, this is Bob Pjorn, and I thought I'd do a little lesson here today on a, a way to play the blues that might interest some people who are maybe tired of the same old way of playing the blues progression. Um, actually, this is one of the first songs I ever wrote back in the 70s, a song that actually came out being called My Son Is Gone, and I recorded it twice. Um, today I'll, I'll reference... Um, uh, recording I did with uh, Kevin Dorsey on a recording with uh, we shared a CD we did together and I have the wonderful Cookie Coogan singing this. Well first let me show you these chords. Um, this is probably for people of um, intermediate or a little more advanced ability but maybe anyone might find some interest in it. So basically what I did is I did two unique things. I have a blues in a minor key and it's in 3-4 time. The chords are very simple. There's only four chords to learn. A minor seventh with the root on the sixth string. It'll, there'll be an A minor seventh and a D minor seventh. And then the so-called Jimi Hendrix chord. As a matter of fact, I like to say a word about that, the Jimi Hendrix chord. Um, but first let me show you the chords and then we'll talk about some of the historical significance of some of these things. Anyways, uh, what we're going to do is go from A minor 7th bar chord at the 5th fret to an E7 sharp 9. Now for people who aren't too, uh, don't have a lot of ability at changing one chord to another, let me give you a little suggestion. When we first learn chords, um, we have to assemble them. Let's say if you go back to how you first learned a D chord or a C chord, you had to assemble the notes one by one. As you got better, you were just able to put your hands right on them. So when you're learning a new chord, if you're having trouble, here's a handy tip I pass on to my students. Try to find the target note, some place to begin, because what happens is you're trying to assemble them, the, the new chord that you're not used to, you're you're trying all different ways of approaching it. If you pick on one note in particular and assemble the rest of the chord around it, it makes it a little easier. We're going to go from A minor 7 to E7 sharp 9. What I tell my students to do is to take the note from A minor 7 where your second finger or where your third finger is and target your second finger going for that note. Then it's easier to assemble. So we're going to go from A minor 7 to E7 sharp 9 by um, changing from this chord right to this chord by targeting this note with the second finger this note first and then assemble the chord you might find it easier so here's what the chords are in this we're going to go A minor 7 to E7 sharp 9 four times D minor 7 to A7 sharp 9 two times. Same thing up higher on the guitar and then back to A minor 7 to E7 sharp 9. And then an F major 7, an E7, and back to A minor 7 to E7 sharp 9. So there really are only four grips or chords you have to hold. A minor 7, we're going to do it here, and we're going to do it here. A 7 sharp 9, we're going to do it here, and we're going to do it here. A major 7th, at the, this is F major 7 at the 8th fret, E 7th at the 7th fret, and back to A minor 7. By the way, this um, is in my book on page 60, and in my reading book, I actually... In my reading book, I actually wrote these chords out um, with the melody. So if you want to look at them, that's My Son Is Gone from my uh, reading book. Okay, well, anyways. So what we have here is a blues and a minor key in 3-4 time. Now, what's cool about this, if you're kind of a rock guy and you want to get into a little jazz, there's nothing jazzier than this so-called jazz waltz. But yet, when you go to solo on this, if you want to jam with some friends, they can use the old A minor pentatonic scale, just like you were playing a blues um, in a major key. 
Um, there's other scale choices you can use. You can actually use um, you could use an A natural minor scale or the A Aeolian mode. Um, Jimmy Page actually used that in Stairway to Heaven. Um, the A natural minor scale or A Aeolian mode. But simply, you can just play an A blue scale to jam on this. So the chords, again, are A minor 7 to E7 sharp 9. And, and again, a word about that E7 sharp 9, when um, people still refer to it as the Jimi Hendrix chord. Now, that was used uh, by jazz players before Jimi Hendrix. Um, he used it in Purple Haze in 1967, but it was uh, being done by people. As a matter of fact, uh, Debussy would... Um, in the late 1800s, used a seven sharp nine. So it's equated with Jimi Hendrix because most of the rockers, when they first heard it, they didn't know what to call it. So they they learned it and they would pass it on from one to another as the Jimi Hendrix chord. An interesting thing I'll say: in 1967, I was teaching, and um, Pete, when when that came out, uh, guitar players didn't have the vocabulary. And I'll tell you what, what really influenced uh, uh, guitar players learning were the guitar magazine, most notably the very first one, which was Guitar Player Magazine. Now, I have, I I've, wish I had the very first one, but here's the second one from 1967. Now, this is the year, a very momentous year in um, rock and roll. Uh, Sgt. Pepper, The Summer of Love. Jimi Hendrix comes out with uh, Purple Haze, Guitar Player Magazine starts. I have every one of these except for the very first issue, which I wish I had gotten. Um, interesting on the back is uh, the Beach Boys, the Challengers, Bob Dylan, and the guys from um, Herb Alpert, who was big then. Um, some of the ads are probably more interesting than uh, the actual stories in here, the ads they had in here. Uh, Honer, PA system, uh, but a lot of cool things. The uh, one, the, the music article, main one, was about the birds. Anyways, that's Guitar Player Magazine, which came out the same year as Purple Haze, which is where guitar players learn the 7 sharp 9. They didn't know what to call it, so I think that's where the Hendrix title came from, but like I said, it was used um, uh, for a long time before that. So anyways, my song is a minor blues in A minor. It goes A minor 7 to E7 sharp 9. A minor 7 E sharp 9 four times. Then we go up to D minor 7 to A7 twice back to A minor 7 to E7 sharp 9 twice. Then F major 7, two measures, E7, two measures, and back to A minor 7 to E7 twice. And like I said, it's a fun chord progression to jam on. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put it on here. Um, you can find my recordings I, I recorded this twice, once with um, Cookie Coogan singing and doing some wonderful scatting on it, and later on my blues album with Anna Dessa singing a great version of it. So um, you can go to Spotify or YouTube and put in Bob Pjorn, My Son Is Gone. You can pr play right along with this. I do have a four-bar intro on it. So when it starts, you're going to hear four of these. Then the song will begin.
uh, listen to the next part. Cookie um, does some wonderful scatting, so when you're playing along with it, you can let the whole thing play and jam with it. By the way, a word about the seven sharp nine. This is definitely the best voicing of it. There's other places to play it. Uh, one thing I notice when I'm teaching this song to people with acoustics that maybe aren't cut away, it's really hard to get up here and get the chord to go D minor 7, A7 sharp 9. So what I show them is another, um, probably the next best voicing of the 7 sharp 9. And um, I'm going to take an A7 chord here. And we have the sharp 9 right here. But usually what they do when they play the 7 sharp 9 like this, they also incorporate the 7th. Just a word about this. This is an A7 bar chord. If you want to get a little funkier R&B sound, you could add another 7th here on the 2nd string. So when you get to play this A7 sharp 9, you might want to incorporate that 7th there. What's good about doing the chord down here, then you wouldn't have to move up so high. So for example, you do your A minor 7 to E7 four times. And then we're going to go D minor 7 here, root on the fifth string, to A7 sharp 9 here. And then back to A minor 7 to E7. So that's another way to play a 7 sharp 9 off of your bar chord, A7 sharp 9. So that's probably your next best voicing of it. So like I said, it's a great little progression um, to jam on if you have friends that maybe just know the pentatonic scale and they're not really into jazz or anything. If you play this chord progression, you could solo with the minor pentatonic scale. Um, anyone who um, has any questions about that give me you know you can contact me through uh, Facebook if you have any questions about that um, it depends on your level um, this is probably not for beginners but maybe people a little more advanced so okay I'll try to put some other lessons out there so check that out Bob Pjarn um, my son is gone you can hear it on YouTube or Spotify or iTunes if you want to put it on your um, phone or something Thank you very much.